Edinburgh, the Royal Borough, capital of Scotland, whose ancient castle stands guard over its historical city of commerce and tradition. Once a year, travelers from the four corners of the world come to watch and thrill at the impressive opening of the Edinburgh Festival, which is dedicated to the highest and purest ideals in art. <laughs> but occasionally, well, something like this slips in. At Macintosh's wedding, way up on the Clyde, the wedding guests were happy and toasting the bride. Well, they drank the whiskey and all got cockeyed. Macintosh was wishing he could die. The piper started playing a tune with a lilt, and Uncle Andy's dancing was going full tilt. Then up went his spurn, and soon came his kill. Oh, ay, 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 ay. When Macintosh tried to get out, Everybody pinned him to the floor. Somebody gave him a clout. Somebody bolted the door. Then Macintosh got into a terrible state. He tried to stop the wedding, but left it too late. He put back the clock, and he tore off the day talk. Ay, 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 ay. Maybe we're both deaf. For once, I hope you're right. At the mat, the doshes waved, my troubles were past. My groom could not escape me, although he ran fast. He stopped for a breather and got him a lot. Oh, yay, 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 yay. I know that I haven't paid a few small bills, but... Listen to me, Frost. There are two men back there loading up my scenery into a van. And unless they get the money, away it goes. Now, Mr. Jansko, if you take back your scenery, I can't open. 
And if I can't open, no one will be paid. Now, your only chance, all of you, is to let me open. It isn't the money, Mr. Frost. It's the principal. Hey, the principal. Uh, you, uh, you don't want the money? No. Uh, yes! Ah, uh, uh, the government will get the most of that anyway. A noble sentiment, Mr. Janskull. That's just my point. Now, look at these poor little girls. Oh, <laughs> uh, open up, Charlie. Come on, Pat, open them up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these are all hard-working young girls. Each one an artist, a star in the making. Uh, well, think of their careers. My creditors, I appeal to you. I came from America to add my humble talents to your magnificent festival. From all over the world, people are flocking to this wonderful city. Do you think they will dare to miss frolics to you? Hmm? What a performance. It gets better and better. Please, I beg you, give me more time. How much time do you want? Um, give me three days. Three days? No, 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 no. Right. We'll give you 48 hours. My creditors, I love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Close and sorry. Thank you, thank you. You're wonderful. Thank you. All right, kids, rehearsal at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Half of you dance like you were flat-footed. Now, go on, get out of here, all of you. It's lack of food. Food? Artists don't think of food. I hate to be sordid, Mr. Frost, but we've all been on rehearsal pay since... Have you no faith? Oh, sure, I have faith, but not much hope. Mr. Frost, could I speak uh, Tomorrow, to dear, Frost? tomorrow. Charlie? Yes, Mr. Frost? Stop them from loading that scenery. Get it back. Yes, sir. You're loaded. Hi, we are. Good. Mr. Johnsko says take it back in again. And none of your outbursts of charm. I'm through. But Phyllis, please. No money, no opening date, no system, nothing but chaos, chaos, chaos. Now, honey, calm yourself. Oh, you can find another star. But Phyllis, you're going too far. On the contrary, I haven't gone far enough. No, but wait a minute. Charlie! Something wrong, Mr. Frost? Now we haven't got a star. Now we haven't got a star. What are you, a parrot? I'm going to open this show with or without a star and with or without money. For that, we need a miracle. Well, remember Dunkirk. Yeah, but they had boats. <laughs> yeah. Circuit. Feet hurt? Oh, no. We just didn't want to wake everybody up. That's very considerate of you. And while you're being considerate, there's just a little matter of two weeks' rent. Oh, we'll pay you, Mrs. Urquhart. Haven't you any faith? Now, listen, you two, I was in show business before you were born. I've crept up more stairs than you'll ever creep up. But this is stretching Anglo-American relations too far. Look, here are a couple of tickets. They're for opening night. Thanks. You already give me half the first row. Mrs. Urquhart. We appeal to your loyalty to Edinburgh. From all over the world, people are flocking to this wonderful city. Do you think they will dare to miss frolics to you? All right, you win. Go on up. Oh, I forgot. You've got a visitor sitting outside your door. Visitor? Who? Oh. Woman from the dressmaker. She's after her money. Come with me. My old man used to sneak in this way after a night with the boys. All I can say is Mr. Urquhart is a very lucky man. He is. He's been dead ten years. Now, quick, up the fire escape. I shouldn't wait if I was you. I've just heard the girls may not be back. They're having a dress rehearsal. My orders are to stay here till I get my ten pounds from Miss Janet Jones. And here I stay. Sleep well. May! May, wake up! Wake up! We'll be late! May! May, get up! Look at the time. Down the fire escape. 
I tuck in my skirt. Let me in your bosom! Have my bag, my gloves, and the drawer. You've got to hurry, too. Open this door immediately! Good morning. Why all the noise? Noise? I'm entitled to noise. Ten pounds worth. Where's Miss Jones? She left for the theater. Didn't you see her go? Did you tell me that? She's here. I know it. Why don't you look under the bed? Please, my lassie. I was told not to come back without the money. She's not here. I've told you. She's gone to the theater. We've got a rehearsal at 9.30. I'm very late myself. Did you signal me? Yes, I did. I hope you don't mind, only I'm awfully late. Not a bit. Get in. A medical, aren't you? Why, yes. How did you know? You use this so gracefully. This is very nice of you, Mr. Bates is the name. I'm Janet Jones. You say you work at the Mercury Theatre? Not if we don't get there in 15 minutes. We'll do it in 10. This would have to happen. I'll never get to the theater on time. Oh, can't we go around them? We shouldn't, but I will. Oh, dear. I think the police are following us. Really? Maybe I was wrong about that 10 minutes. I told you yesterday, this show's going to open with or without money and with or without a star. Now, get the rehearsal going. Bye, thanks. Morning, Mac. No good. Who told you to finish facing up there? You did. Me? Never. It's no use appealing to the cheap seats. Go on your knees to the expensive ones, like this. And play it down there. That's where the dough comes from. All right, let's try it once more. OK, hit it. Stage manager to see the that stage manager in the business. My duty as a stage manager is... is to see that Mr. Frost doesn't have any more worries than he's got already. And you're doing it wonderfully. You're a sweet little man. Sorry, Mr. Frost, I thought you said it this way. That was yesterday. She didn't know you changed it. Of course she didn't. And shut up. You just came in. I saw you. I had an accident. Yes, you certainly did. You ended up this way instead of this way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. You spend your life being just a halfway good chorus girl. And that goes for all of you. How do you suppose I got to the position I'm in today? Well, I'll tell you. Through grit, determination, and punctuality. It's just that our alarm clock didn't go off this morning. Alarm clock. Stars aren't made by alarm clocks. Stars are made by talent. That's why you'll never get out of the chorus. That's where you're wrong, Mr. Frost, because I am out. I quit. Hey, wait a minute. Nobody quits on John Frost. You're fired. It's a pleasure. All right, everybody, take a 15-minute break. Back in a minute, Mac. 
I want to see Miss Janet Jones, please. I'm sorry, you'll have to wait. May I see Miss Janet Jones, please? No, no, she's rehearsing. You just take your turn. I have a prior claim on Miss Jones. I only want to return her bag. She left it in the car. No one sees anyone until rehearsal is over. Any call for me, Mac? No, my dear, no. Oh. Oh, are you Mr. Drummond's chauffeur? No, I'm Mr. Bruner's. It's not Mr. B.G. Bruner, the greeting card manufacturer. The very same. Oh, he uh, didn't send you here for me, did he? Betty Summers? I'm afraid not. I'm waiting for Miss Jones. Janet Jones? Are you a friend of hers? Yes. Well, will you do me a favor, miss? Give her this bag. She left it in the car. Why, of course. And give my love to Mr. Bruner. Somehow, I don't think he'd appreciate it. Janet Jones. Well, well. <laughs> I don't think I'll wait after all. Please don't bother to tell Miss Jones I was here. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Frost. I didn't see you. If you put as much energy into your dancing as you do into running blindfold down passages, we might have a show. Yes, Mr. Frost. What have you got there? A bag. Janet Jones's bag. She's B.G. Bruno's girlfriend. So is that any reason to go to... She's whose girlfriend? B.G. Bruno. B.G. Bruno's one of the richest men in Scotland. Mm, that's right. He's a millionaire. He's five millionaires. I looked him up. So he's going around with one of our girls, huh? Well, what do you know? <laughs> What's your name? Betty Summers. I'm the girl that's been wanting to talk oh, to you about... Oh, not now. Not now, Betsy. Betty. Yeah, yes. Well, I'll see that Janet Jones gets the back. Oh, yes, sir. But if you could just give me a few minutes, then I can... I'll give you much more than that. I'll give you a raise <laughs> next time I pay you. Oh. Charlie! Yes, Mr. Frost. Don't do that. Oh, I gotta talk to you. Who does he think he is? Telling me I'd never get out of the chorus. Listen, you'll never get out of town if you don't earn some money. You're going straight up to Frosty and play the prodigal daughter. I am not. After those insults. Why should I? Several reasons. One dress bill, two weeks rent in arrears. Shall I go on? No. Charlie, Charlie, you can't be that dumb. Janet Jones, one of our girls, is going with B.G. Bruno. He's her fiancé. Does that ring a bell? B.G. Bruno, the millionaire. Multi, Charlie, multi. He's worth five million, maybe six. Janet Jones and the millionaire. What a pity. Why a pity? She's a wonderful girl, the greatest. Go and get her, quick. Janet isn't with the show anymore. Don't argue. We're saved. If B.G. Bruno loves her... What do you mean she's not in the show anymore? Well, don't you remember? She quit at rehearsal. Oh, so that's the little... We'll start her. That's what we'll do. Where does she live? I don't know. Well, why don't you know? Am I asking the impossible? What's Janet Jones' address? Who, sir? Everyone gives me an argument. What letter do you cry of J and Here, look through these. Find Janet Jones' address. Well, don't stand there. Do something. Why aren't things filed right? All I want is one address with a simple name of Jones. Not Crimble Gin or Zabisco, but Jones. J-O-N-E-S. In a well-run office, they'd find it like that. The trouble is there's no system around here, no initiative. Do I have to teach you how to file, too? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Frost. Not I'm... now, later. Can't you see I'm busy? Don't we have a list of the cast? Don't we know where they live? Suppose somebody got sick, what would you do? Call a doctor. Oh, call a doctor. Uh, I only wanted here, to... Here, you ask... might as well help, too. Look through these. Who are you? Janet Jones. Well, don't stand there making idle talk. Look for the address. Uh, whose address are we looking for? Janet Jones! Who did you say you were? Janet Jones. Oh. Charlie! Janet Jones. You see, I have to do everything. Well, Miss Jones, where have you been? We've been looking all over for you. Come in, please. Right this way. I'm sorry you walked in on such a mess, but we were trying to find... Mr. It. Frost, I came here to apologize for my behavior on the stage. I guess I lost my temper. And why shouldn't you? What? If there's one thing I like, it's a girl with spirit. Oh, here's your bag. But where did you... Now, it's no you... time to discuss that. We've got to discuss you and the show. Well, get me a standard contract. I really can dance, you know. I, I don't think you've ever seen me do a real solo. Well, I don't have to, darling. I don't have to. <laughs> I suppose now you can't even find a simple contract. Look, Mr. Frost. 
It's a piece of paper this size. A baby could find it. Yeah, that's wonderful, honey. We'll work out some great routines. I can do acrobatic, too. Why do I have to do everything? But, Mr. Frost, I can't... There, you see how simple it is? Oh, no. Are you hurt? No. Oh, thank heavens. Here, sign this. I can sing, too. Yeah, 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 sign it. Miss Jones, I do hope you don't mind us coming in. Ah, it is Miss Jones. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Now, Madame Amanda, I've already told you why I can't pay you until Friday. Pay? Oh, mademoiselle, vous en prie. Do not mention such a thing. Mais regardez tout ce que je vous ai apporté. For you to try on. Try on? <laughs> yes. Miss Pinfold. The first we call blue moonlight. Claire de lune. Isn't it wonderful? Beautiful. We will try it on. If you wear it, pas? Oh, c'est une robe délicieuse. And Mademoiselle has just the figure. A wasp waist. Step out, please. Don't you think she has this pin for? Oh, yes, madame. Of course, there are others. But you can try them on at your leisure. Uh, step in, please. Uh, Miss Penfold. Yes, madame. You have not uh, forgotten to bring the silver tissue, yes. the rose chiffon, and the coquelicot. I beg your pardon? The red poppy. Ah, celle-là est magnifique. Oh, mademoiselle est so chic. Attends un tout petit moment. Oh, voilà. Oh, elle est mignonne. And the color goes so well with your complexion. Maintenant. Oh, mon Dieu, you have not got a miroir. Ah, you can see yourself from here, from the waist up. Now, what do you think of that? It's perfectly beautiful. Miss Pinfold. Et ceci? Wonderful, but you don't understand. Voilà, for you, take it. With the compliment of Madame Amanda. It is Hermine. But Madame Amanda, I'll never be... Or able... would I rather see you in a silver mink? It is what I have been asking myself all this morning. Miss Jones could have the silver mink too. Miss Penfold, comme vous êtes intelligente. You are brilliant. <laughs> but of course, Mademoiselle can have the silver mink too. Voilà. Oh, c'est une merveille. <laughs> Not a word. All I ask is that you look at the other trifles. Madame Amanda, did Mr. Frost... Oh, me? ne vous gênez pas. Let us not worry who tell me anything. It is a little uh, secret, n'est-ce pas? <laughs> C'est l'amour. <laughs> Maintenant, venez donc, Miss Penfold. Mademoiselle must be tired. And if there is anything else you want, un coup de téléphone, tout simplement. Promise you will telephone me. I promise. Merci bien, mademoiselle. Enfin, enchantée, comme Miss Penfold. Lovely day, isn't it? Nice thing. Me, oh, May, am I glad to see you. Now take a deep breath and listen. I'm listening, but I got no breath. Frosty's given me a contract. And Madame Amanda gave me all this. And where are you stabling your racehorses? May, please, you've got to be serious. Somebody in Edinburgh's got to keep their sanity. What does all this mean? You don't know. Well, of course I don't. Janet Jones, I think you're a stinker. Oh, May, don't you start acting crazy, too. Well... While you cool off, I'll slip out of this dress. I would, too, if I were you. I don't know what you're so huffy about. Well, you could at least tell your best friend. But I'm trying to tell you if you'll listen a minute. Oh, all right, then. Tell me something about B.G. Bruno. Who's B.G. Bruno? Who's B.G. Bruno? He's only your fiancé. You're mad. I suppose everybody at the theater's mad, too. I suppose you think it's nice for me, your best friend, to be the last to hear the news. What news? I don't know what you're talking about. Do you mean you're still going to deny it? Of course I deny it. 
then I repeat. Janet Jones, I think you're a stinker. The whole world's gone mad. Why do you think Frost is starring you in the show? And old Amanda gave you this lot. Why? Well, why? B.G. Bruno. Look, will you please tell me who is this B.G. Bruno? He happens to have made millions out of greeting cards. Furthermore, he happens to be the richest man in Scotland. He still doesn't mean a thing to me. He doesn't mean a thing to her. Listen to me, Janet Jones. Will you take an oath on all you hold dear that you aren't engaged to B.G. Bruno? Engaged to him? I don't even know him. <laughs> Will you please tell me what you're laughing at? Well, don't you think it's funny? You get dressed and starred on account of a man you don't even know. <laughs> I think it's horrible. Listen, Frosty thinks he's pulling a fast one. Star the girl and the fiancé will put money in the show. You don't honestly think... Why not? It's been done before. Want me to name a few stars who started that way? No. Come in. Miss Jones? Yes? Will you sign here, please? Well, blow me down. They're from Frosty. Then you can take them right back. Uh, just a minute. I'll take them. How long have you said your prayers for a break? Well, you've got it. I don't want a break this way. Oh, what difference which way? If you make the grade, you can always tell them afterwards. You didn't tell Frosty you were engaged to old Moneybags, did you? No, but And I you still... didn't tell old Madame Guillotine you had money, did you? No. Well, come on, girl, let's live a little. It's a mistake. But it does say B.G. Bruno. Whatever it says, you know and I know. It's a mistake. And when I heard that this young woman had actually visited you here, during office hours, in the Easter room, well, quite frankly, Harold, I, I was flabbergasted. I don't want this to happen again. <laughs> no, but, yes, Mr. Bruno. I mean, we have a staff outing once a year for that sort of thing. Yes, Mr. Bruno. Well, Harold, uh, I have no wish to pry into other people's private lives. But here in Bruno House, I will not have the members of my... St what is this? It seems to be some sort of a bill, sir. I will not have the members of my staff mixing business with pleasure. There are certain standards of decorum... Of decorum, which I insist upon being observed. You may go, Harold. Yes, Mr. Bruno. Now, what is all this about? Amanda, Princess Street, why is this addressed to me? Well, that's what I was wondering, sir. Miss Janet Jones, Mercury Theatre, Silver Mink Stole, Ermine Rap, Satin Negligee. Well, this is monstrous, preposterous. 
I've never been near the Mercury Theatre. I've never heard of Janet Jones. You deal with this. Well, what are you looking at me like that for? Like what, sir? Well, you surely don't think that I have anything to do with this. You, Mr. Bruno? Why, of course not, sir. Of course not. I knew there must have been some mistake. Why, it must have been. Well, sir, I knew that you couldn't. What do you mean, I couldn't? Well, sir, I mean that you wouldn't. Well, I should hope not, Mr. Dodds. Answer the telephone. Mr. Bruno's office. The what? The Mercury Theatre, sir. For you. Hello? I have wonderful news for you, Mr. Bruno. Yes, for you. We're going to star Miss Janet Jones. This is B.G. Bruno Limited. There's some mistake. Oh, no, there's no mistake. I've had my eye on her for some time. We're going to build a show around her. Look, is this a practical joke or something? I tell you, I've never heard of Janet Jones. <laughs> I quite understand, Mr. Bruno. But don't worry, your little secret is in good hands with me. Well, now do you believe me? Yes. Yeah. There you go again. What, sir? Looking at me in that surreptitious way. Tell you, I've never heard of this girl. Of course not, Mr. Bruno. Whole thing's a practical joke. Or something worse. If I were you, sir, I should get in touch with the police. And have the firm involved in the scandal? Oh, no. I shall deal with this in my own way. Was I looking that way again, sir? You were. It was unintentional, I assure you. Mr. Bruno. I should hope so, Mr. Dodds. Now, we're going to do the number again, and this time we're going to do it from the beginning right through to the finish. Everybody take the positions. Okay, Joe, hit it. Yeah. 
you boys a rest, Joe. That was a good dress rehearsal, kids. Now get into your practice clothes. That was fine, Janet. You're wonderful. There are one or two things we can polish up later. Thank you, Mr. Frost. I'm still having a little trouble with the downstage spins, but I'll get them. You bet you'll get them. Now go and have that new costume fitted. Hello, Mac. I have an appointment with Janet Jones. That's right, Mr. Tracy. She's expecting you. Go on in. Okay. You know, Mr. Tracy, it should make a grand story for you, eh? From chorus girl to star in one jump. Aye. I hope you're right. Paul Tracy, Morning Express. Oh, hello. Would you mind waiting a minute? Sure, that's okay. No hurry. Well, Tracy, my boy, how nice to see you. Come and have a drink. Oh, I will after, but Miss Jones... Oh, is... you've got a minute. She just went in to change her costume anyway. Come on. Yes, sir. I want to speak to Miss Janet Jones. I'm afraid she's busy at the moment. What name? Mr. Bruno. B.G. Bruno. That is correct. Oh, certainly, sir. Please walk right in, Mr. Bruno. Through the swing door, first passage on the right, room number one. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. You may come in now. That's fine, Maggie. I'll send it up to you later. It's all fixed. Mind the pins when you take it off. Yes, Maggie. Oh, I'm sorry you caught me like this. How do you do? How do you do? I didn't mean to keep you waiting. Won't you sit down? Miss Jones, I have come here to get to the bottom of a certain matter. Yes? Which, to put it frankly, and not to beat about the... Are you Janet Jones? Why, yes. Am I a disappointment? Oh, no. No, I just expected something rather different, that's all. Oh, I see. Please sit down. And you won't mind if I change this, will you? Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, look, I I'll wait outside, oh, no, shall I? I can talk from behind here. You know, I thought you'd be quite different, too. Me? You mean you were expecting me? Of course. Then you know what I've come about. Naturally. Why did you do it? Well, I always wanted to, ever since I was a child. My father was dead against it. I should hope so, too. On the other hand, my mother encouraged me. Your mother encouraged you to practice a deception? Oh, there was no deception. I merely said I wanted to go on the stage, and I went. Miss Jones, that is not the explanation I require. Oh, I know you want something more colorful. You know, I can't get over you. When they told me Paul Tracy was coming to interview me, I expected some hard, fast-talking, moving newspaper man. But you're not. Miss Jones, this name of Paul Tracy... Oh, it's probably not your real name at all. Anyway, I find you most comfortable to talk to. Oh, you do? Oh, as a matter of fact, I, I don't find you as uncomfortable as I expected either. Oh? Oh, you're, you're very... you've got a lie. Hmm. What a charming room this is. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. I've only been in here since this morning, but gay drapes and flowers always help, don't they? Uh, do they? Why, certainly. Oh, well, shall I begin at the beginning? Yes, please do. Well, let's sit down. Would you like to know where I was born? Yes, I'd, I'd love to. Well, I was born on a little farm in Virginia. Well, that's amazing. So was I. What? Oh, oh, not on the same farm. No, ours was Devonshire. Then I went to school at Harrow. I left when I was 16, because I couldn't stand it any longer. But my father had very definite ideas about how life should be lived. And he said... Oh, pardon me, but who is interviewing whom? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Please go on. Well, it was a little rose-covered cottage, nestled among the magnolia trees, down near a lake. And every morning, I used to get up very early and milk all the cows. How many cows? Fifty. What are you smiling at? Oh, nothing. Please go on. You don't believe me? Oh, it's just that I know about farms. I've got some. You have? I mean, I've got some relatives and things that live on farms, and I know what they are. Oh, you do? 
All right. It was a plain brick house with no roses. Not a tree or a cow for miles. It wasn't in Virginia. Hoboken, New Jersey. <laughs> she was born on a tuna fishing boat off the coast of Mexico. Her mother was a former Ziegfeld girl. She met Janet's father and gave up a career. She loved him that much. He was a deep sea diver on the side. Uh, how much is Bruno putting into the show? Now get this for real drama. Her mother taught her everything she knew. And when a storm wrecked the boat and they didn't have a dime, what do you think the poor kid did? Went off and met B.G. Bruno. Yeah. Why don't you give him a drink? Then bingo, out of the blue I got this break. Wonderful. How did you get it? Well, I didn't. Just... Was it uh, hard work or influence or what? What exactly do you mean by that remark? Well, I wondered if perhaps there was someone with some pull who... Were you thinking of anyone in particular? I understand that a certain Mr. Bruno... I thought so. I wonder when we get around to that. I simply wanted to find out if... Uh... There was absolutely nothing between myself and B.G. Bruno. I don't suppose you believe that either. Oh, yes, I do believe that. I'm getting sick and tired of these stupid fables about me and B.G. Bruno. You are? I'm so glad. Uh... Where did you meet him? What? Oh, we met at a party last winter. I understand he was in uh, Egypt last winter. Well, well, Cairo is in Egypt, isn't it? Oh, yes. We've been there a long time. Well, that's where we met, on the pyramid. On the pyramids? I mean, near the pyramids, just a little to the left. <laughs> a little to the... Yeah, to the left. It was in Hawaii that Janet met B.G. Bruno, on the beach at Waikiki. It was love at first sight. Was she wearing a grass skirt? Well, I did. Look, I'm trying to give you a great story. You're not even taking notes. Oh, I can remember it. And what I can't remember, I can make up too. Oh, please don't be angry, Miss Jones, but I had to find out about you and this the Bruno fellow. Oh, I know. You've got your job to do the same as me. I don't suppose you really like digging up facts about some paunchy old millionaire. Paunchy? Oh, yes, and he wears thick bifocals. He does? Wanted on the stage, Miss Jones. Well, oh, coming now. I'll have to get into my rehearsal clothes. Oh, wait, I haven't got half the material I need. Uh, uh, will you meet me again tomorrow? H have lunch at the aperitif. The aperitif? Who do you think you are, B.G. Bruno? Oh, it's all right. I've, I've, uh, I've been saving up. You don't have to take me to lunch anywhere. Would you please zip me up? But if you'd like, we could have a bite at that little place across from the theater. Janet, you're on. Shh. Oh, pardon me. Coming. <laughs> One o'clock. One o'clock. Oh, promise you won't mention anything about Bruno in your article. I promise. It wouldn't be quite, quite. Quite. Janet, you're on. Oh, bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Good morning, sir. For you. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Dodds, old man. How's your paunch today? You must watch that. And how is your... Oh, good morning to you. Mr. Dawes, I want to talk to you. Mr. Dodds, has it ever occurred to you that this office lacks something? No, Mr. Bruno. Well, it does. It lacks charm. Everything about it lacks charm. You lack charm. Well, I'm sure I'm extremely sorry, sir. Oh, don't apologize. It's not your fault. But we must brighten it up. Life, Mr. Dodds, is a sunny thing. You can't expect people to work in cold, drab surroundings. Look at them. We need something over there, and over there, and all over there. Flowers. That's what we need. Lots and lots of flowers. Flowers, Mr. Bruno? Certainly. Gay drapes and flowers always help, don't they? Do they? You've all got into a rut. That's the trouble. This place is like a morgue. 
We must do something about this, and this, and that. It's a lucky year for Janet Jones of the Mercury Theatre. Yesterday a chorus girl, today a star, tomorrow a probable bride. Mm -hmm. We mustn't say who the lucky millionaire is, but it looks like greeting cards all the way for Janet. Oh, oh, who that give me face. that. Well, oh, what's the with her? Of course, I knew it all the time. Hi. Nice man, you're Mr. Paul Tracy, wasn't he? Yes, very. Lots of charm and very understanding. Yes, why? Take a look at that. Come in. Are you decent? <laughs> When John Frost does something, he does it properly. Get a load of that. Is it beautiful? Well, look at it. Yes, what's it for? It's for you and yours. Me and mine? Yes, it's the model for your new number. Specially designed for B.G.'s little lady. Ought to make him happy, don't you think? It ought to make him delirious. Uh, look, Mr. Frost, I think that I'd better tell you... Oh, that... no, honey, not now. Later, huh? We'll talk about it tonight, over dinner. Will you have dinner with me? Oh, I'd love to, but I Oh, haven't... well, now, whatever the butt is, cancel it. And bring Bruno, I mean, uh, Mr. Bruno along. Oh, Mr. Bruno. Yes, I want to talk about the show. Oh, you can come, too. Stops it from being an odd number. Charmingly put. Well, I'm sure Mr. Bruno would love to come, but uh, he's out of town today. Well, okay, tomorrow, then. All right, if he's back. Oh, fine, wonderful. Well, little man has a busy day. Goodbye, now. I'll see you later. Oh. Do you live under my feet? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Frost. Oh, could I speak to you? It's very yeah, important. Yeah, tomorrow, I... honey, tomorrow. Now, which way are you going? Oh, that way. Good. Only half an hour late. That's what I call being punctual. <laughs> and that's what I call being contemptible. Oh, you mean the, the new housing scheme? You know very well what I mean. Your column. My co Oh, yes, my column. I might have known that your promise not to print something meant just about as much as your, your phony charm. I didn't write this. Then who did? Well, it could have been anybody, from the editor down. You swear it wasn't you? I swear. Oh, I'm so glad. I couldn't believe you'd do a thing like that. Couldn't you? Well, no. I thought you were rather nice. It's a coincidence. Good morning, miss. What would you like? Your usual? Oh, yes, thank you, sir. And you, sir? She's talking to you. Oh, uh, I'll have the same as the lady. Yeah. Do you wish to share one, sir? I do. Anything to drink, sir? Champagne. Tea, Sally. Well, shall we finish the interview? The interview? Oh, yes, the interview. Now, um, <clears throat> tell me, have you, do you, uh, a ring? Do you wear a ring? I'm not engaged, if that's what you mean. Congratulations. Um, not engaged. I started in the chorus when I was 16. But last winter, I couldn't get a job, so for three months, I worked as a waitress. Last winter? Mm-hmm. Was that uh, before or after you went to Egypt? Before. Then you met Mr. B.G. Bruno, and he fell in love with you at first sight. No, oh, he did nothing of the sort. He must be mad, as well as old and paunchy. Would you like to know how I got my first stage job? What does the B.G. stand for? Uh, what? Oh, the B.G.? Oh, he doesn't like me to say he's rather touchy about it. Touchy, old, mad, paunchy. I'm oh, getting quite a picture of Mr. Bruno, aren't we? Oh, he's really a very nice person. That's good. Where does he live? It, I walked into my first audition, and I had this piece of music in my hand. Where does he live? Who? Oh, oh, uh, oh, BG. Oh, I never can remember the address. He always sends one of his cars for me. He does? Yes. Oh, I, I'd no idea it was so late. There's his car now. I must be going. Uh, 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 that's... Yes, uh, BG's car. I mustn't keep him waiting. 
Look, please, I have a lot of things to ask you, especially now. I'm sorry. Well, can you meet me here tomorrow, same time, uh, Miss Janet? All right. Same time, Mr. Paul. Oh, uh, have you got a mother-in-law, some blackbirds or something? No, that's too high. Better put him back on the table. Yes, Mr. Bruno. Ah, that's better. Don't you think you ought to see Bates now, sir? Bates? Oh, yes, Bates. Show him in, Mr. Dodds. You will come in now, Bates. Thank you, sir. You may talk, Bates. Well, sir, I, uh... You picked up a strange young woman in Mr. Bruno's car. Yes, sir, she was terribly late and afraid of losing a job, sir. So you gave her a lift. A strange female who, for all you know to the contrary, might have been a doubtful character. And probably was, since you were so willing to ride in a stranger's car. Mr. Dodds, I see no reason to indulge in personalities about a young lady we, um... We don't know. As a matter of fact, she's a very nice young lady and very attractive. <laughs> I'm quite sure of it. And I don't doubt that you made the most of your opportunities. Mr. Dawes, I strongly resent your inferences. I'm sorry, sir. I was only putting two and two together. Bates has already told us that she was a very nice young lady, and I know she was. I'm sure she was. I'm sure you'd have done the same thing, sir, in the circumstances. Quite right, Bates. All I ask you to do is to find out from Bates just why he was outside the stage door of the Mercury Theatre yesterday afternoon. It was about the summons, sir. The young lady said she'd come to court as a witness. Oh. Oh, I see. You've used Mr. Bruno's car for your own purpose. You've concealed facts and given lifts to strange women. I must tell you, Bates, that Mr. Bruno takes a very grave view of the matter. Hmm? Yes, this is a serious business, Bates. And uh, I don't like to feel that my employees are deceiving me. And therefore, Bates, I think I am voicing Mr. Bruno's views when I tell you that we must regretfully terminate your... Excuse me, Mr. Dodds. The auditors are here. Oh. Uh, oh, uh, thank you. Uh, excuse me a moment. Yes, Bates, this is a, a grave breach of trust. And uh, I feel impelled. I feel impelled. In fact, I insist on doubling your salary. I forgot my papers. So let that be a lesson to you, Bates. But, Mr. Bruno... Not, not another word. My decision is final. Thank you, Mr. Bruno. Hey, what are you doing? We're taking this scenery away again. Who told you to do that? Mr. John Skull. He's inside. Charlie! Charlie! Thank heaven you're here. Oh, gentlemen, wait a minute, please. We opened tomorrow. You said you'd give me time. Your time's up, and you've broken your word, as usual. But you don't understand. I've got the richest man in Edinburgh behind me, haven't I? Yeah. It's too late. We're finished with all your lies and excuses. What do you mean, lies? It's a question of a complete lack of ethics, Mr. Foss. But you heard me phone Bruno, didn't you? I'm starring his girl. Isn't that ethics? Well, isn't it? Uh, fine, Janet. Send it to my office right away. Then why don't we see our money? Well, these things take time and documents and lawyers. You know how it is. Oh, I want to show you something. Just come to my office for a minute, please. Just a moment. Come along. Janet, Mr. Frost wants us in his office. I'll be right with you. Now, this is the new number I'm putting in the show. Can't you just imagine the scope you'll have, Mr. John Scope, when you build that set? When I build it? But of course. You don't think I'd be ungraceful enough to give it to someone else, now that I have unlimited backing? You stand there and ask me to build another set for you when I'm here to take my scenery out? Why, certainly. I'm not the one to bear any malice. Well, you get no costumes out of me. Did you want to see me, Mr. Frost? Oh, Janet, my dear. This is Mr. Johnskill and the friends. I was just telling them about our plans and uh, how we're uh, dining tonight with your fiancé. With my... Yes, how we're going to discuss the final details of the, of the show. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, that's right. <laughs> May I ask where you're having your dinner? Oh, uh, uh, at the Bon Viveur. We'll make a point of being there, Mr. Foster. Oh, good. Uh, now can I have my scenery back? At the moment, I see no reason why not. I hope I feel the same way tonight. Good day to you. <laughs> good day, and thank you. Oh, wait a minute. You can't build a set without the model. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, and goodbye. <laughs> Go get the scenery back again. <laughs> We're on our way, honey. We're on our way. Oh, Mr. Frost, I'm afraid it's just impossible. Listen, Janet. I'm giving you your big break, am I not? Now, there's something I want you to do for me. 
Get B.G. Bruno to have dinner with us tonight. But I can't, Mr. Frost. He's, uh, he's out of town. Oh, he's back. I read a chauffeur was in court yesterday. Oh, Janet, you'll be saving the show. Your whole career depends on it. But I can't. I just can't do it. But you must. Everything I have is at stake. Think of all those poor kids depending on the opening of the show. Yes. Oh, Janet, you're a sweet girl. You're a sweet girl. I knew you wouldn't let us down. Now go on home and call up B.G. Bruno right away. Hurry up now. All loaded up? Aye, we are. I got news for you. In again. That's Jimmy. He's no good, he lives. How about Reginald? Do you think he'd pass as a millionaire? It's no use, May. I can't go through with it. Now, look. If you promise to produce B.G. Bruno tonight, you've got to produce something. I'm going to tell Frosty the truth. And lose your break over my dead body. Now, relax and come and choose your fiancé. But we don't even know what he looks like. He's 35 with a moustache. How do you know? Elementary, my dear Watson. I rang his secretary. Said I was doing an article on famous men and their pastimes. And what is his pastime? His work. Oh, pardon me. Then we'd need a serious-looking gentleman. How about this one? He looks very rich. He's just gone bankrupt. Oh. Looks pretty hopeless, doesn't it? Paul. Yeah, I brought you a few flowers. A few? Oh, Paul, they're beautiful. Well, how do you do? How do you do? Oh, of course, you two haven't met. Paul, this is May. May, this is Paul Tracy. Hello there. I've never seen so many flowers. Where'd you get them? In a shop. What did you do? Snitch them? Snitch? <laughs> I don't understand. Don't ever take any notice of May. Be a dear and put these in some water. Paul, you mustn't waste your pennies on things like that. Sweet of you, but it isn't necessary. Well, I just saw them in the windows. I was going down the street. They were in a big... Uh... Anyway, I... B.G. Bruno! How do you do, Mr. Oh. Bruno? May, you're mad. Well, we couldn't ask Paul to... Why not? Are you ready to save Janet's career? Well, of course, but how did you know about... Do you think you could pretend to be B.G. Bruno? No, Paul, I won't allow it. Why, we could get into terrible trouble. Why should we? It's perfectly simple. All you have to do is have supper with Janet and Mr. Frost and me. Well, what could be nicer? Oh, then I'm supposed to be Bruno. You see, Mr. Frost wants to meet B.G., and unfortunately, he's out of town. Oh, he's out of town. Where is he this time? In Cairo again? No, uh, Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo? He really gets round, doesn't he? Will you do it? Of course. But, Paul, it isn't easy, you know, pretending to be someone else, especially a millionaire. Do you think you could get away with it? I could try. Uh, being a little practical, do you have a dinner jacket? Yes. Is it all right? I mean, it isn't one of those shiny green ones. Oh, it's rather smart. It has a... Right. You're hard. Now then. Come and sit down. You've got to be briefed. You sit here. First of all, as Bruno, you must pretend to know everything about the social world. You keep talking about your villa at Monte Carlo and your yacht. Do I have a yacht? Two. And remember, you're a wealthy man. Don't act like you. Act, uh, cynical and, uh... I'm sort of blase. Exactly. Uh, oh, and you better buy a cigar. Oh, I don't smoke cigars. You don't? Oh, but all millionaires smoke cigars. All the time. Well, I'll try. I just hope I'm not sick. Paul, it's very sweet of you to do this for me. Oh, Janet, I'd do anything for you. Now, come along, you two. There's no time for that. We've got to get ready for zero hour. All right. What time do we go into action? Pick us up here about ten. You better go. We have to hurry. Operation Bruno is on the move. And from now until then, keep saying to yourself, I'm not Paul Tracy, I'm B.G. Bruno. I'm not Paul Tracy, I'm B.G. Bruno. Oh, that's terrible. Go home and practice. You know something? I think we've made a great mistake. Why? He's the most unconvincing B.G. Bruno we could have picked. I'm B.G. Bruno. I'm B.G. Bruno. I'm... I'm B.G. Bruno. Or am I?
Now, there's nothing to be nervous about. Just look as though you're used to this sort of thing. I'll try. I still think we made a great mistake. Good evening, oh, Mr. Good evening. Mr. Frost has a table, I believe. Yes, sir. This way, sir. This is Mr. Frost's table. When he arrives, you might tell him where we're sitting. Certainly, mister. Thank you. You did that very well. I thought so, too. Good evening. Thank you. Now remember, there's nothing to be nervous about. And don't talk too much or you'll give everything away. And don't forget your B.G. Bruno. B.G. Bruno. Well, well, Mr. Bruno. No, don't get up. <laughs> Just wanted to show you how I feel about Scotland. When in Rome, do what the Romans do, wear kilts. <laughs> I may please to meet you, Mr. Frost. I've heard a lot about you. Well, I've been most anxious to meet you. B.G. just uh, got back from Monte Carlo on his yacht. Oh. Hmm? Oh, yes, on my yacht. Cigarettes, B.G. Aren't you smoking your usual cigar? I forgot them. He's a dreadful one for cigars. Well, try one of mine. No, no, thank you, no. Oh, there you are, darling. Oh, Maurice. Wait, Miss. Maiden, please. Thank you. Well, what shall we have? Uh, to start with, uh, how about some caviar? Wonderful. Caviar. No, not for me, thank you. I don't like it. You don't? No, I think it's very overrated and much too expensive. You don't have to worry about that, being a millionaire. <laughs> well, uh, uh, how about some oysters? I'd like some soup. Soup? He's joking. He adores oysters. Don't you, darling? He's even got his own oyster bed. Isn't he silly? He's so rich, he doesn't know what he has got. Well, what do we have to follow? Sole, lobster, uh, roast duck. Might I have a plain omelette? An omelette? B.G., will you stop joking? You order, Mr. Frost. B.G. and I want to dance. This is our favorite tune, isn't it, darling? Excuse it. They make a perfect couple. Honestly, Paul, you're not even trying. Oh, I am trying. You know what the trouble is, don't you? No, what? <laughs> You keep on calling me darling. Oh, Paul, you just keep your mind on your job. And remember, you're B.G. Bruno. I am B.G. Bruno. Uh, we'll finish off with Crepe Suzette. And bring some champagne, bottles of it. Certainly, Mr. Foster. He's a charming man, Mr. Bruno. Charming? To look at him, you'd never know he was a millionaire. Never. the other gentleman dining at Mr. Frost's table? He's dancing at the moment with a young lady in a blue dress. Oh, that's Mr. B.G. Bruno, sir. Thank you. Not at all, sir. A moral reformation. Mr. Frost has told the truth. Now, Paul, please try and say and do the right things. I'd do anything for you, Janet. Just concentrate on being Bruno. Right. Everything's working out beautifully. John Stills impressed. I can see it. You know something very amusing, Mr. Bruno? There's three friends of mine sitting over there. And seeing us dining together, I bet they think you're putting money in my show. <laughs> Matter of fact, I've often thought of putting a few thousand pounds into a show. Oh, well, uh... Darling, this is our other favorite tune. We've simply got to dance. You'll excuse us, won't you? A fine moment to take them dancing. Uh, Mr. Frost, I don't think you should try to get B.G. to put any money in the show. Why not? Well, uh... He doesn't understand show business. Listen, by the time this meal is over, Mr. B.G. Bruno will be Mr. Show Business himself. I was just trying to live the part. All right, but you overplayed it. I'm sorry. You're very sweet, Paul, and I'm really grateful for what you're doing. It's just that you're completely wrong. You're nothing like a millionaire. <laughs> Maybe I should have worn a beard or something. Well, it isn't how you look. It's, it's the things you say and do. I'll do anything you say. I'll even smoke one of Frost cigars. Let's sit down. Here they come now. If she asks him to dance again, grab him. 
Quite an orchestra they have here, eh? Yes, makes you want to keep on dancing. Yeah. Well, it isn't good to overdo it. Oh, hello, boys. Are you off? I thought we'd stop and say hello. Before you said goodbye, eh? <laughs> oh, may I present Mr. P.G. Bruno? How do you do? I hear you're taking an interest in our wee show, Mr. Bruno. Yes, yes, a great interest. And then we'll be seeing more of you around the theater. I hope so. Well, we mustn't keep you from your dinner. And don't you worry about a thing, John. My boys will work all night on the new scenery. Oh, that's fine, Mr. John. Well, thanks very much. Good night. Good night. Good night, night. Mr. Good night. Good night. Well, you don't know how pleased I am to hear you say that you're interested in our little show. Oh, I am, believe me. Uh, if you'd care to come to my office tomorrow, I'm sure I could interest you much more. My dear B.G., how are you? Hello, Elizabeth. I've been trying to catch your eye all evening, but you absolutely refuse to look in my direction. Uh, um, uh, uh, may I introduce uh, Miss Jones, Miss Thompson, and uh, Mr. John Frost, Lady Martin. Well, how do you do? How do you do? John Frost. Don't I know that name? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Do you read Variety much? Variety? She's broke. I gave her a couple of pounds to do this. Is that a new magazine? Well, it all depends on what you call new. <laughs> Mr. Frost is in the theatrical business. He has a new show opening at the Mercury Theatre. You want to see it, Elizabeth? Yes, and bring the Duke. You must call us up sometime, B.G. She's haven't a phony. Been Paul gave her two pounds to do this. I'll call Elizabeth. It's been so nice to see you again. Well, I must be going. It's been delightful meeting you all. Good night. Well. And, and Frost in a kilt. Poor old Frosty. He really tries, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Look, suppose I really had money. I mean, lots of it. Would you like me to let Frost have them? Mm, I think so. I'd like to see him get a break. Besides, it's my break, too. At least it will be for one night. Those creditors will probably close him up when they find out he's pulled a fast. <laughs> I want to ask you something about B.G. Bruno. No, don't let's talk about him. Here, help me down. I want to talk about him. It's important. Oh, no. Please, we, we've had a row. A row? You and Bruno? Yes. What about? About you. Me? BG's very jealous of you. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I'll go and see him tomorrow and tell him. No, you won't, Paul, please. Thanks for helping out tonight. Surely I can call him up and explain. Paul, would you be very angry if I told you that something I've been wanting to tell you. I don't know B.G. Bruno at all. I've never met him in my life. Please understand. Oh, Janet. Janet, look, uh, uh, there's something I want to tell you, too. Janet. Yep. Uh, Janet, look, uh, ever since I met you, I wanted to dance and sing and, and climb trees and, and, and I got spots in front of my eyes. Uh, uh, Janet, uh, hello, are you still there? Uh, look, look, I must tell you. Janet, listen. Oh, I'm just, <laughs> just fixing a few things. <clears throat> nice evening. I've told you a hundred times, I do not want to speak to the bank. What do I have to do, tell you in scotch? Mr. Bruno, sir. My, my dear Mr. Bruno, how nice of you to drop in. Sit down, please. Well, I can only stay a minute. It's a very funny thing. I was just thinking about you. I, uh, I was going through my accounts. And then you started uh, thinking about me? Yes. No, 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 I didn't mean that. It's just that uh, I took quite a liking to you last night. There's something about you. I wonder what that could be. Well, I don't know, but there it is. And I said to myself, no matter what inconvenience to me, I'd like to let you put some money in my show. Well, that's very kind of you. Now, Mr. Bruno, you have no idea what a gilt edge investment this show is. It's so simple compared to your business. No paper to buy, no greetings to write, no cards to print. You just sell seats. Well, as a matter of fact, now, I Now, if you'd care to invest a small sum... No, I wouldn't... Uh, say, 3,000 pounds. No, no. Well, 2,000. No, no, no. Well, 1,000, I couldn't let you in for less than 1,000. Mr. Frost, my mind is made up. Mr. Bruno, look at this book. I worked it out that we can make this amount every week. Clear profit. And then there's the television rights and the film rights and, and records and, and, and any Mr. number. Mr. Frost, 
Once my mind is made up, my decision is final. <laughs> This'll make you laugh. You know what I thought that was, looking at it quickly? A check for 10,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <gasps> Mr. Frost, there's one condition attached to that. Janet must never know about it. It's just between you and me. Is that agreed? <laughs> Mr. Bruno, as far as I'm concerned, I've forgotten you ever gave it to me. Thank you. <gasps> and as far as you're concerned, you can forget it, too. <laughs> yes. Oh, hello. What are you doing here? Well, I, I, I can't stop. I've, I've got a press reception. Goodbye. Good luck. Paul! Hello, get me the bank. I want to talk to the manager. <laughs> what? Yes, I said the bank. Well, so times change. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Janet, my dear. Come right in. Mr. Frost, what was pa Mr. Bruno doing in here? Well, now, what does a millionaire do best? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> well, get Charlie for me. I want him to go to the bank. Mr. Frost, I demand to know, did the man who just left here give you that check? Uh, Mr. Bruno and I have a little understanding, Janet, and you're not supposed... He's not Mr. Bruno. Oh, now, Janet, my you dear. You want me? Oh, yes, Charlie, do me a favor. Take this check to the bank and tell them to put extra guards around the vault. 10,000 pounds? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. You mustn't take that to the bank. Oh, now, Janet. You can't. He'll be arrested for forgery. Who, me? That man wasn't B.G. Bruno. He's just a newspaper man, a friend of mine. I don't even know B.G. Bruno. Say that again, will you? But this time, give it to me slow. I've never set eyes on B.G. Bruno. But when you insisted that I bring him to dinner, I, I just had to find someone else. I'm so sorry, Mr. Frost. That's all right, Janet. Will you ever forgive me? Huh? Oh, oh forget it now. Go on back and get ready for rehearsal. Scotland Yards in London. Well, what's it doing in London? I want that guy arrested. On what charge? All of them! Impersonation, forgery, mayhem! No! Fraud, slander, libel, arson! Well, go on, get out of here! Oh, oh stabbed in the back. <laughs>
nice work, kid. They love you out there. Thank you. Mr. Frost, that phony millionaire is here in the theater. Up in the box. Look. Well, how do you like the nerve of that guy? Go tell the police, quick. Police? Where are they? Where are they? They're all over the theater. Do you want a map? Go on. Oh, oh, oh. Mr. Frost, what are you going to do? Now, don't you worry your little head about that but guy. But you don't understand. Yes, I understand, all right. Now, hurry up, change your clothes. You'll be late. Going. Don't ask questions, just come on. Well, that was exhilarating. Paul, you must be mad coming here like this. Why? Anything the matter? You've got to get away from here quickly. What for? But he's got to be here someplace. There's a cop at every exit. Do you hear that? He's looking for you. Hurry. Out the window. Well, go on. It's all right. It drops into an alley. I don't want it to drop into an alley. He just couldn't fly out of that box. Why do I have to do everything? Here are the keys to my apartment. Go there and lie low. Well, that's very serious. I'd like to stay and oh. see the rest of the show. Don't you realize that half the police in Scotland are after you? Why are they after me? For giving Frosty that phony check. something I must get straightened out. Paul, but Look, you... that wasn't a phony check that I gave Frost, because I am B.G. Bruner. Now, listen to me, Paul Tracy. I've been trying to help you. If you don't want my help, all right, but at least have a little consideration for me. This is my opening night. Oh, I know. I am sorry. But it's true. I, I can prove it. Open the door. Have me arrested. You know I can't do that. Oh, why not? Because I love you, you lunatic. Say that again. Step to the room in this corridor. Paul, please, please, will you do as I ask? All right, but you do know I'm Bruno. Oh, will you get out of that window? Well, I get out of the window, I should go right back in the box and see the rest of the show. Hey, Sergeant. And after the show, I want to hear all that again about, about me being a lunatic. Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to come down to the station with us, sir. But, Sergeant, I can explain everything. I'm sorry, miss. Those are our orders. Nice work, boys. Lock him up. Good evening, Inspector. Oh, Mr. Bruno. I'm very sorry about this. Now, don't you start. This isn't Bruno. Oh, but it is. Of course it's Mr. Bruno. I've known him for years. You mean, you're really you? Well, then the check, it, it's, it, it's... It certainly is. Where is it? It's gone. The check, I've lost it. You better find it. Charlie! Charlie! <laughs> now, do you believe me? Oh, Paul. Janet, you're on! 
But, May, this is terrible. Paul is B.G. Bruno. Oh, who cares? You've got a number to do. Oh, oh, don't bother me. me. Go away. Yes, sir. Only I found this and I oh, thought... My perhaps... check. Uh -huh. Oh, you divine, wonderful girl. Oh. You must have a reward. Anything you want. Just ask for it. Well, I'd like a few words with you. Well, you can have a hundred words. Just start talking. Well, you see, Mr. Frost, my father is very disappointed. He has a lot of excess profits and he'd be wanting to invest some in this show. Oh, fine. <laughs> I don't feel very well. Oh. Let's sit down. In that check. Did you see his face when he thought he'd lost it? Poor Frosty. Get so excited. But then it was opening night. Well, you're miles away, aren't you? Where are you? Hoboken, New Jersey? Mm mm. Virginia, milking all those cows? No. On the pyramids? Near the pyramid. Just a little to the left. Oh, yes. Where you met that chap with the big paunch and the bifocals. That's right. I want to ask you something about B.G. Bruno. Don't let's talk about him. But I must. There's something I want to know. What? What does the BG stand for? Paul? 